Olga Bopner, you're a member of Nobel Committee for Physics and you have just awarded the discovery of the expansion of the universe which is going faster and faster. What exactly is expanding? Uh, this is a fantastic discovery. What is expanding is the fabric of space-time itself. So the universe is amounts to the content of space-time and the whole thing is expanding. So even the universe in this room, like we are receding from each other? Well, every point in the universe is receding from every other point. However, this room is very small, so the expansion is minute. However, if we look at the galaxy, which is some distance away, then the expansion is measurable. And if you look at objects which are really far away, like the supernovae, which are about halfway back to Big Bang, then they're really receding from us at fantastic speeds. So, so how big is this expansion? Well, the universe has about doubled in size over the past five billion years, which is since the beginning of our solar system. Our solar system was born about five, thousand year, five billion years ago. Uh, wh why is this uh, discovery so perplexing? Well, before the expansion was the, the accelerating expansion was discovered, one believed that the universe was dominated by matter by objects like ourselves, like the stars and suns, like planets. And a universe which is dominated by matter will be expected to slow down due to the pull of gravity. And so the two groups of researchers set out to measure this deceleration, as it is called, the slowing down of the universe. And to everyone's amazement, and they wouldn't believe what they saw, they realized that the universe was not decelerating, it was actually accelerating. Totally amazing. You said earlier that it was like pushing the brake in a car. What happens? Well, you push the brake in a car and you expect the car to slow down and stop eventually. But if you discover that your car instead of accelerates, it's, oh my God, something is happening, which is, you know, not what I expected. And that was the feeling they got. Something totally unexpected. So somehow the universe was born for, in Big Bang for 14 billion years ago, and then it was decelerating, slowing down the expansion, and then it began somehow to expand faster and faster. When did it happen? Well, it happened at about the time when the solar system was born, actually. When it depends on the balance of various components of energy within the universe. And Einstein has taught us that E equals to mc squared. So matter, a mass, is equivalent to energy. And the balance between various forms of energy, between matter, between radiation, and other forms of energy, is what determines how the expansion varies with time. And about at the time when the solar system was born, this unknown form of energy, which we call dark energy, started dominating over matter. The component was larger all of a sudden. And since then, the universe is accelerating. How actually, how was the discovery done? How can you see the accelerating expansion? Well, to see the accelerating expansion, you need two things. One is that you need something which is called standard candles. You need some object in the universe which you see at very far distances, and this was the supernovae, which can be observed at cosmological distances. So you go back to the birth of the universe many billion years ago. And then you need the cosmological model. And to obtain a cosmological model, you need to rely on Einstein's theory of relativity, on, on his general theory of relativity. And then comparing the expectation of this model with what you observe, how much light you see from these distant supernovae, and comparing how much light you see from the distant supernovae with how much light you see from those nearby, you can deduce if the universe is slowing down, as Einstein would have it, or that it actually is accelerating. So the groups that are awarded today, they expect it actually, like Einstein, that the expansion will decelerate, that will go slower and slower, but it didn't. 
Well, that, that was the expectation. They expected the universe dominated by matter, by the things we can see and believe are there. And in a universe like that, according to Einstein, you would expect the universe slowing down. The expansion, which started at Big Bang, would eventually slow down. And this is not what they observed. No. The expansion of the universe is actually has been known for almost a century, since the 1920s. Uh, why didn't they notice that the expansion is going faster and faster already earlier? <laughs> Well, this, this is a difficult measurement. As we already spoke before, the expansion is only obvious if you go to very large distances. And to go to very large distances in the universe, you need objects which are visible at very large distances, and hence the supernovae. So the proposal to use supernovae for observation was put forth in 1938 by Bade. However, it turned out that the supernovae were not alike. They were that different kinds of supernovae. And to be able to make a measurement on the basis of observed luminosity, you need similar supernovae. And it was only in 1968 that one realized that such supernovae existed. So knowing that a, an object exists, it's not the same thing as finding sufficiently many of them to make a measurement. And so you expect to see only one or two of these supernova explosions per thousand years in any given galaxy. So this is a difficult measurement. You need to observe very many galaxies to be able to make a statement at all. And it was then only with the development of the CCD imaging systems that uh, the two groups of scientists in the 1990s were able to observe sufficiently many galaxies at a single time to be able to catch sufficiently many supernovas. And we are talking about 40 supernovas in one group and about 16 in the other group, to be able to make a measurement. And this is why it took time. The universe is vast. They were competing with each other in those observations, uh, but now they get the prize together. How come? Well, they were actually racing each other. But the, the discovery was so improbable that they needed each other's support to, for the community to believe what was observed. The two independent groups making the same observation were absolutely necessary. There is one question which is buried behind those observations, and this is a question about the fate of the universe. What does it mean for answering this question? What, what is the final fate of the universe? Well, the fate of the universe depends, of course, on the expansion. And an, a universe which is ac accelerating, will event the galaxies will eventually move so far apart that we will not be able to see any other galaxies than our own. We would expect that galaxies which are close to our own will be pulled towards the, the Milky Way by gravity but the galaxies which are far away will, will just disappear out of sight, so the universe will become darker and darker. However, we will just see the galaxy which surrounds us, so to us, at Earth, the universe will be as bright as ever. It's a consolation, I would say. Thank you very much, Olga Bakhmar. Thank you.